This is Unleashing Leadership, and I'm your host, Travis Moss, with our Season 5 co-host, Dave Nurchie, with us, and we are getting after lessons learned from the book, The Hard Thing About Hard Things, by Ben Horowitz, and today we are going to talk about how you cannot keep incapable people, regardless of who they are, in positions, or everyone is going to lose. So we got to get the incapable people out of the positions, positions that they're in. Okay, so um, this is brought to you by Cutthroat College Podcast and it's helping people avoid going broke because of the cost of college. Check them out at nqrmedia.com. Dig in and get more info about their college boot camp program. Really cool. There's some scholarships for kids that are looking at going to school, um, really focused on making a good college decision, maybe paying $60,000, $70,000 a year for tuition and room and board isn't right for you. That's this program helps you address that state school, private school, trade school, taking time off for work. If you're trying, if you're a parent, you're trying to help your kids make good decisions, check it out and you can get more information. Again, they have a podcast, Cutthroat College Podcast, nqrmedia.com. And they also have college boot camp. That's a scholarship program. Um, well, they have scholarships for the program. It's an actual education program, but they have scholarships for it at Seeds of Hope, which is sohteam.org. So see the Pope. Um, all right, Dave. Cannot keep in capable people. Why don't you lead us on this one? Sure. The first thing I think of with this, you know, it talks about regardless who they are, um, is the tenure, kind of the tenure conversation, right? So just because people are, have been at a company a long time or, you know, the kind of the traditional way I think, well, they deserve it, right? They've been here a long time or they've made some contri good contributions in the past. Um, they may get to a level where they're incapable of doing the current job, right? We talk about that a lot. The job changes, you know, tour of duty type of concept, right? You're whatever the current job is, if they're incapable, you got to get them out or that spreads, right? We've talked about in the previous episodes, whatever that manager or, whatever position you're talking about, if they're incapable of doing it, that is going to spread, whether it's the way they're training, um, the way that uh, others look up to them or under like their attitude about things. Uh, it's just going to one way or another, it's going to spread throughout the team and, and the company, depending on what position we're talking about. So I, I that's, that's kind of my first thought about that. Yeah. It's, a, it's like the Peter's principle, but it's, you know, you promote people into the highest level of incompetence, mm -hmm. but it, it's kind of the other way around. It's let's say that you're in a role and and the the business is just growing so fast or changing so fast it doesn't have to be growing, but changing, changing or growing, and all of a sudden, what you're really good at doesn't line up anymore with what 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 what's needed. Mm -hmm. So, um we tend to stay in positions out of loyalty or out of entitlement or just not wanting to rock the boat or whatever the issue is. So, and it's really, really, really hard, especially for small businesses where normally everybody's got a relationship with each other, you know, to go to somebody and say, look, this role is, has grown beyond you. Um, or you have not kept up with the role or where we're going, we need skill set X, Y, Z. And that's not here right now. And, but it has to be. Mm -hmm. And, and I think it for business owners and managers and leaders, it's very difficult. Same thing with employees. It doesn't have to be a manager or, or a leader within the organization. It can just simply be an employee. An employee was a great employee for years. And then there's an overhaul in the system or the technology, or you're going, I think in, in, in the book, they go from, you know, they're, they're selling, um, what were they doing? They, they they went from like selling one service to selling a different service completely, right? Mm -hmm. And um, it, they needed a completely different set of employees to do what the new company was going to be doing. So unfortunately, they have to do a bunch of layoffs. And I think Ben talks about how that cuts so deep in everything because these people have been through the fire with you. They've been there the whole time. But yet they do not match where the business is going literally first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. And, and so 
the issue is, is that if you do not make the change, nobody will have a job because the right. business will fail. So you have to make a change, which means some people will feel like they're kind of unfairly targeted because very rarely do you have people who are working at a company and proud of their work who then say, you know, yeah, it was fair that they let me go. You know, normally it's like, oh, they made decisions and then whatever, and it cost me my job or my opportunity or whatever, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so it, it's a very, very, very difficult thing, but it's the reality. I mean, the reality, and, and people, I, I think people get bogged down on this. I see it in personal finance all the time, this identity of who they are and where they work and all that kind of stuff. And it kind of formulates around them this kind of shell and that's who this person is and that's their strength and their protection, all in that. And um, there's only one way to go and that, and you got to make more money and you got to have more vacation time and, you, you know, life's supposed to get easier as you get older and all that kind of stuff. And then it doesn't materialize like that because the world is changing around you. Mm -hmm. And we fight it because we're, we are in love with who we were supposed to be instead of becoming who we should be. So whether that's skilling up or whether that's going and working for a different company or whether that's changing careers altogether, because guess what the career that we were in, it got wiped out by artificial intelligence or something. You know I mean? Like there's a lot of jobs now that don't exist. that used to exist. It, it's kind of, it's, it's a funny thing. You know, it's, I saw something online the other day. They said that I was reading an article. They found this shark in South America and they were talking about how they find 2000 species of animals a year that we think are either extinct or we didn't know existed. Huh. And at the same time, we're talking about, you know, mass extinctions, all these animals going extinct. Well, we don't even know all the animals that are out there. So how do we know like that? This isn't just, you know, a normal rate it just happens to be the ones that we can visually see right now. Right. right. And so I kind of go back to this and, 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 and I think about um, things are changing so fast and people have to be, we have to be flexible enough to say, look, as sad as it is to see that go, it has to go because this is showing up. Um, yeah. You know, in, in business, it makes it, it because of the relationships, it makes it very hard. Yeah. Yeah, and I think you know that's a lot of what you're saying. That's a that's a perspective that you you kind of have to adapt at this point as an employee, right? Like of a company, it doesn't matter what what industry you're in, or you know, you, things will change. How do I how do I stay relevant and add value? Type of thing questions like you you can kind of ask yourself from the, the the leadership side of it, right? And and saying like you can't keep incapable people. That's why the book is the title is what it is, right? The, the hard, hard thing, thing about, about it. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a hard thing to do. So the more you could communicate that, and you know, kind of way that we're trying to do here, of like, hey, this is the reality of it. This is what it looks like. Well, you know, give that person an off ramp, right? Help them if they were a great contributor at your company for a long time. Help them with the next job that's going to fit well with right. that, or you know, maybe there is a pivot they can make at the company. Maybe there are skills that transfer somewhere, had that conversation, see if that's a possibility. So I think that's probably the best you can do as a, as a leader. Um, unless, unless you think I'm missing something there, but no, those I, are, I think the big steps of what you can do to kind of prepare for something like this, because regardless, it's not going to be easy, right? It's going to be, yeah. you're going to hurt a relationship or you're going to feel pretty shitty about it. You know, if you had to do that, um, you know, in the end, it was a better decision for the, for the overall, you know, for the, the larger group and the company, but it does, that's not going to make it feel better. So I think just having though being as proactive as possible to help that person, like this person we're talking about, right. The incapable person is, is, is probably one of the best things you could do in that situation. Well, I'm thinking, you know, when somebody's not good at what they're doing, you can be willfully ignorant, but a lot of times they know it and, and you can become pretty insecure or stressed about it. And so sometimes it's like an unspoken secret, you know, that everybody actually knows, but you just don't say it out loud. So I guess it's not secret, but it's just something that's unspoken. Mm -hmm. And sometimes just getting out there will help. I, I think Ben talks a lot about it too, especially, you know, with people who have been a part of building something is that chances are very good that they're going to take it very personally and they're going to need an off ramp. Yep. And 
we talk about tour duty framework and that kind of stuff. And that's where I think you have to be. We don't think about when people get into business, a lot of times they don't think about the exit clauses. How do I get out of business? Right. right. Or how do, you know, we have a partnership. How do I get out of the partnership? Those types of things. I, I joined the company. What happens if I don't want to work at the company anymore? What happens if the company doesn't want to work with me? We think in these very finite terms, like I'm going to be there for the next 30 years, mm -hmm. you know, and, and this is how it's going to work out. And life is going to change. Your life's going to change. The business's life's going to change. And there's going to be a point where these changes are going to take precedent and, and they're going to have to happen and they may impact you because not everybody's going to grow and keep up at the same time, go in all the right directions. Um, and we've talked about, you know, how you have to, you have to be deliberate in the way that you design the company and the things that you promise people and how you promise them to, you know, you're going to come here as long as you grow personally and professionally, you know, and we're going to look at milestoning this and helping you kind of level up and there's going to be opportunities, but it's based on your development. And it's based on the business's needs as well. It's not just your development. Your development's half of it. The business development is the other half of it. And so not only do you need to get better, but you need to make sure that the business gets better. Otherwise, where's going to, you know, how's, how are those opportunities going to kind of converge on each other? You know, if you're studying the wrong things, if you're getting good at the wrong things that don't have anything to do with the business, you act, yes, you could promote yourself right out of a job, basically. Right. right? If the business is going right and you're going left, there's going to be a divergence. Um, and we have in our manager's creed that we've written um, the final um, point of the, or the final principle. We have five principles. The final, I believe it's the final principle. Um, employee first, friend second. Mm -hmm. And we don't think like that. We're people. We want to be friends first. You can't not, if you're in charge, you can't be friends first. You have to be boss employee first. And the reason why is because if I need to tell you that you're 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 messing up or you're inadequate someplace, and you said it earlier, either in this episode or previous episode, if I don't tell you that you're falling behind, that you're not going to be able to keep up, and you're just kind of not aware of it or just kind of like willingly going along and not paying attention to it because it's kind of stressful, mm -hmm. we are going to have a heartbreak when we get to the point where it's like, hey it's time to cut the cord because it's more like, well, why didn't we talk about this before now type of thing, you know? And these, this is what Ben's trying to tell people. This is, this is the power of this. You know, you want a mentor, you want somebody to help you understand what you should and shouldn't be doing. He's saying that your business is going to change the roles and the, and the employees that you have in them, they're all going to be changing. And you need to be able to sit down and say, look, Here's what we need now may not be what we're going to need in the future. And this is how we're going to handle these situations when they come up. He's saying get good at that because mm -hmm. I will tell you from somebody who's been through it the first time through it. If, if you have not had this advice, if you have not read this book and some of the things he talks about making some of these transitions, you will screw it up and you will burn the bridges because there will come a point where you have to choose between friendship and business. Yep. Um, and not so much friendship. It's not like Dave, like, geez, if I tell you something that's hard for you to hear, I'm choosing between friendship and business. I'm actually, as a friend, doing the most incredible thing I could possibly do. And I'm not yeah. choosing between wanting to be your friend or not. I'm saying, Dave, I value you so much. I am going to make sure that you have this information so that you can make adjustments to your life, even if that means you don't want to be my friend anymore. Yeah, it's prioritizing. Right? It's not choosing. It's more prioritizing right. what needs to be said, um, and it's it's inevitable, right? To to the point of like you know reading this book, using it as a a resource. Like it's really the it's the the path you choose, and and, and it's the decisions you're going to be faced with to make, right? Again, yep. the title of the book. When you take this path as a leader, as a CEO, this stuff's going to have to happen. So preparing for it is is the key.